Look with me at Romans 1 and verse 28. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. Now, the first part of verse 28, I think, is extremely informative. And even as they did not like to, what's the next word? Retain God in their knowledge. See, it's not that man had to go acquire the knowledge of God. He already possessed it. But he didn't want to to keep it. You see that? Look with me at Matthew 18, verse 6. Matthew chapter 18 and verse 6. Now, we'll look at this in Matthew 18. You can, you can find this also in other Gospels, but we'll just look here in Matthew 18, verse 6. Notice this. But whoso shall offend one of these little ones, it's obviously talking about children, and then notice what it says, which believe in me. Now you can decide for yourself. Here's what I think that's saying. You know what happens with little ones? They naturally believe in God because that information, that revelation, has been given to them. Little ones naturally believe in God. But guess what happens as man grows older? Man gets to decide. Do I want to retain that knowledge? Or would I rather not retain that knowledge? You know what much of humanity does? They decide not to retain that knowledge. But by the way, that's evidence of guilt, isn't it? Because you had it. It was given to you. You possessed it. And you made an affirmative decision to say, I'm not interested in keeping that. I'm going to toss it out. That's what's going on in, in Romans 128. Man starts with the knowledge of God, but doesn't want to keep it. Many folks in interpreting Romans 1 will say that what we're seeing here about God giving man up, God giving man over, man not desiring to retain the knowledge of God, many will say that's a description of the Tower of Babel, and that's where these things occurred. I personally don't believe that that's exactly what it is. What I personally think you're reading in Romans 1 is the natural life cycle that all men go through. My, my personal opinion, you can decide for yourself, is that Romans 1 is the best text on human psychology ever written. And it explains why people are the way they are. And what happens in the natural life cycle of man is a child is born and, they, and they're they going to mature, of course, but they are born with what knowledge inherent within them. It is the knowledge of God. And as they go through life, they get to choose whether or not they retain that knowledge. And what we've read so far in Romans 1 is that what man decides to do is he often decides, I don't want to retain that knowledge, and I'm going to change that truth of God into some sort of lie that I like better. Now, one of the, I'll, I'll, I've said this before, but I'll mention it now because I, I think it fits. When you read Romans 1, 18 to 20, and it talks about God has revealed his wrath, and it's, it's understood by the things that are made, even His eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Here's what I personally think happens. Not only is man born with the knowledge of God, 
man also has the knowledge of the wrath of God because that's been revealed. So if you think of a typical sinner, I know God exists. I know that he has wrath. I know all too well my sins. This is bad. And when Scripture talks about his eternal power in Godhead, not only has wrath against my sin, he has eternal power to do something about it. And so there's really only two good options to that. Really, well, there's two options. Only one of them is good. One option is believe the gospel, find the sufficient payment for your sins so that you don't have to pay for them yourself. That's the most logical, rational, spiritual thing to do. But if you're not going to do that, if you're not going to accept the sacrifice that Christ made for your sins, what are you left with? Well, you're left with God's wrath, His eternal power, His judgment against your sin. You're in quite a predicament. It'd be better uh, if there was no God. It'd be better if we were all saved. There's silly, silly people saying things like all men will be saved. Silly's too kind a word for what that is. Atheism is the wishful thinking of the guilty. Rather than face a holy God that has eternal power, and I have, I'm without excuse according to Romans 1 verse 20, I'd much, I don't like that at all. So what I'm going to say is there is no God. And you know what? When I talk to my fellow sinners, they agree with me. There is no God. We can take a poll and most people say there is no God. Or many would. But you realize, you see what I'm getting at? That's all wishful thinking. That's not truth-based. That's things you would like to believe because the alternative is you're going to have to give account for your sins. That's why I think Romans 1 is the best psychological textbook ever that's ever been written because it explains human behavior. What happens is man is confronted with this horrible truth and if he rejects the gospel, he has to come up with a different coping mechanism. That's what's going on. Now, Romans 1.28 talks about God giving them over to a reprobate mind. Look with me at 2 Timothy 3, verse 8. 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 8. 2 Timothy 3, verse 8. Now as Johns and Jambres withstood Moses, so do these also resist the truth. Notice, men of corrupt minds reprobate concerning the faith. So a reprobate mind is a corrupt mind. It is worthless. Now what Romans 1.28 says... I'll just read this part again. God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. So what man does is he says, I don't want to retain God in my knowledge. So I'm just, I'm forgetting, I'm excluding that from my knowledge. So God says, okay, you don't want to keep me in your knowledge. I'm going to give you over to a reprobate, a worthless mind. Because what, what, what inevitably happens, what happens if you reject all knowledge of God in your mind? Your mind becomes worthless, doesn't it? You've rejected the most basic truths about the universe. So he gives them over to a reprobate mind, a worthless mind, a corrupt mind, and then what they do is they do things that are not convenient. So let's talk about the word convenient. The modern usage of the word convenient means fast, easy, and not out of my way, right? So a fast food restaurant is convenient. A convenience store is convenient because it's located in a place where it's convenient to folks and it's fast and easy. That's the idea. Uh, that's the modern version of convenient. Let me read to you the 1828 definition of the word convenient. Fit, suitable, proper. 
So now think about this with me. God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do things which are not convenient. The idea is they're doing things that are not fit, suitable, or proper. So I'll say this. The result of a reprobate mind is to do things that are not suitable. Sin is not simply rebellion against God. It is self-harm. Isn't that true? If you do things that are against nature, so let's go back to my alcohol example. If I repeatedly consume too much alcohol, and so I burden my system with something that it was not designed to be burdened with, what is inevitably going to result? It's destruction, right? I, I'm, I'm, I'm imposing destruction on myself when I do things that are not convenient. And that, of course, is what man is busily doing most of the time. <laughs> 